Hi, and welcome to another C++ programming tutorial from Someone9031. And in this tutorial, I'm going to be teaching you guys about character arrays in C++. So up until now in C++, we've seen many different data types. We've had things like int for integers, bool for booleans, char for characters, float and double for floating point numbers, and so on. But we've never seen um, a variable or a data type that is capable of storing a, um, a string of characters or a series of characters. So yeah, say we wanted to make like a very simple program that simply asks the user to enter like a word or a sentence or a string of some sort and then uh, we'd store that in something and then print it out again. How would we make a program like that when there's no um, data type that can handle a string? Well, because a string is basically um, a sequence of characters, the simplest way, and the one most people probably think of, um, would be to make an array of characters. So I'm going to call it a string. Uh, let's put 256 characters, you know, to make like big words or sentences. And then we can initialize it just like any other array, except because this is characters, each um, letter has to be surrounded by single quotes or it won't be recognized as a character. Like that. And then after the last character, we need one more character. It's called uh, the null character, and it's this, backslash zero. And um, it is of the type character, or char. Even though it's two characters, it's an escape character. And it has, and it's the integer equivalent of zero. And what it does is it tells C++ that this is the end of the string. Um, there will be no more after it. So um, it's term it terminates the string. That's why strings like this with character arrays are known as null terminated character strings or because they're um, terminated with a null character or more simply as a C style string because this is the way strings were used back in the days of the C programming language of which C++ is a direct descendant so that's why we have so many uh, remnants of the old programming language um, we have this, the character arrays and stuff uh, we have their old libraries um, some of their old functions so lots of stuff left over from C because you know it was a very important language it was one of the most popular la development languages in the world um, so yeah when we pr now when we go to print the string out we don't need to have like a loop that cycles through and prints each character in turn instead uh, we can just put the name of the string and since you know C++ knows about strings um, yeah, it'll just print it out for us. And now it says hello. And you can see that it doesn't print out the final null character because um, that basically won't print out. It's just tells it's just there to mean that it's the end of the string. Now, okay, this data type is like good, but this like um, definition is sort of like com really complicated. Uh, it's prone to mistakes and stuff and you know if we had like a really big string with like 256 characters we won't want to be like typing out each of them in turn so like I said C++ knows about these types of strings and it provides us with a much simpler way okay we can just simply put double quotes around the string um, and it will automatically add the null to the end for us and just do what we did in the last one. All we need to do is use sync double quotes around the whole thing. So if we run this again, it says hello, just like in the other one. So now we can go ahead and make that program I was talking about. Uh, so see out, uh, enter a string. C in string C out you entered and then print it out so actually it's not that hard once we have this character array that we can use 
because we can just use our normal input and output stuff on it and it just works. So enter a string, so um, string. Let's just make it simple, you entered string. So that's worked um, exactly the way we want it to. But there is a problem. It's a problem we didn't see in the last one because we didn't do something, okay? Now, what if we want to enter a whole sentence? So, hello, this is a string, like that. Now, it simply says you entered hello, comma. Why is this? Okay, this is because of the way we inputted um, the string into the variable. We used a C in statement which we always use for our variables and it always works perfectly and it worked perfectly for this sim single word but um, cn will automatically stop the input as soon as the input reaches a space and it leaves the rest of the input for another cn statement so that allows us to like stack two cn statements like that so we can have two variables um, separated with a space and we can input them both into different variables so yeah, that's um, you know it's a good feature, but when it comes to strings, that's not what we want because we want the whole string, not just the first word of the string. So um, we can get around this by using some of CN's member functions. Now we've been using CN um, sort of like an operator almost. Uh, we just really didn't care about it, um, but CN is actually an object created. An, um, an object of the type uh, iStream or input stream. So, um, like the objects we've been creating from our own classes, that means CN also has member functions that are defined within the declared within the iostream library and defined in the standard namespace. So, the member function we're looking for is something called get line. Okay, so that is the input we're looking for. And yeah, it will keep inputting. Okay, it won't just stop at um, uh, a blank space. Now it takes three arguments. The first argument, of course, is uh, the string that our input is going to go to. The second is um, the number, the maximum number of characters to enter. So once it reaches that many characters, it stops the input. So that means you won't uh, enter more characters than your array can handle. So in our case, that'll be 255 for our max number of characters, um, because we need that null at null character at the end. And then the third argument is completely optional. You don't need to have it. It's called the delimiter, and the delimiter is um, the delimiter is the character to stop the input at if the input has not reached uh, this number yet. So if you know we have a short string it doesn't reach the 255, then the input will stop once it reaches this delimiter. Um, I've, so input will stop once it reaches either this number of characters or the delimiter. And the standard delimiter is the new line character, which is this, like that. So uh, that is the new line character. And so input will, def uh, will stop when it reaches a new line. And because that's what we want to happen, we don't need to put it there because, you know, it's already there. It's the default. So we can run the program again and do what we did last time, and this time it will work. Enter a string. Hello, this is a string. You entered, hello, this is a string. So, you know, that worked exactly how we wanted it to. So right now it seems that this uh, C style string seems uh, very useful and um, yeah, but it can also get a lot more useful uh, because C++ also provides several functions that we can use on it. So let's just make this equal to hello exclamation point, okay? And then uh, we can uh, use our first function on it. So we're going to be printing out this function. So it's called strlen or string length. That's what it stands for. So you can probably tell by the name it finds the length of the string. So it takes one argument and that is the string that we will be outputting. 
uh, that we will be finding the uh, length of. Like that. So run the program. Six. Okay, so one, two, three, four, five, six characters. Uh, you should probably note that it does not include the null character at the end. So uh, this function is really useful if you want to find out how many characters are in a string at a given point of time, not like how many uh, how many elements it has, but actually how many characters it's holding at um, a given time. And then for the next function, we're going to need another array. So char string 2, 256. Um, we don't, we're not going to initialize this. So it's called strcpy. It stands for string copy. So it copies one string into another string. It takes two arguments. The first one is uh, the destination string, the string you want to copy to. And then the second argument is the source, the string you're copying from. So we can do that. And then we can print both of them out. String string and then copy of string string 2 like that run the program again here we go it says string hello copy of string is also hello so that's the copy function and then the next one is strcat and it stands for string concatenation and to do that I am going to get rid of this and I'm going to make this equal to world world uh, yeah you can probably tell where this is going um, so string concatenation basically means um, it adds one string onto the back of another string. So the first string is the destination. This is where the uh, second part will be concatenated onto, and it's uh, where the value is stored. So that will be string, because we're going to put string 2 onto the back of string. And then our source will be string 2, like that. And then string will actually print, be printing out string 2. And um, actually, we can just get rid of this whole thing. And then copy of string instead will change to concatenation. I think that's how you spell it. I'm not really sure. And then we'll be printing out string. So run the program. You now see it says hello world, because it added string 2 onto the back of string and then stored that value within string. So uh, that concludes this tutorial. If you liked this uh, video, please uh, subscribe and you can feel free to leave any comments, feedback, or uh, questions below in uh, the comments section or you can uh, PM me with any questions you have about this or any other C++ concepts. And uh, yeah, thanks for watching this video and uh, please rate.